Cadillac got the West, man. Deuce got the Crib. So, man, what they gonna do now? Man? The West and the Crib together, man. Welcome to the Free Lunch Podcast. This is your boy Tight Tight, and I got BG with me. What's happening? Wow, Mama, I still want to be famous. Free Lunch Podcast. What's happening then, your boy BG? Hey, Tight, we back at it, huh? We back at it. Man. Are you really trying to still be famous, dude? Man, I still want to be on TV. Ain't no doubt about it. Ask anybody. They'll tell you. I do not want to. girl want to be on TV. I ain't ready. I ain't ready for the TV yet. I'm still behind the scenes first. I let you step. I let man. you step out there, huh? They got by me, man. I was supposed to make my 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 debut cameo in the Selma movie, but I missed it. So, so, so I how did that? We we still got a show to do about Selma. It's out. Get, you need to. You, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go check it out. Have you seen it yet? Now, at this point, moment in time, I have not seen it yet. But go the figure. But the plan is still for us. To do a to do a follow up once you and Miss G had a chance to see it, but once we get through with this podcast episode, I'm going to watch it. So put two and two together on that one, family. <laughs> so what's been what's been what's been going on in your world? Give you a few everything updates on my lovely. end, huh? Everything lovely and on this side of the map. 2015 has been good. A lot of uh, positive energy is surrounding me so uh, it's a it's out the outlook is good man I'm, I'm excited about where we are where i am right now and um just trying to keep this thing pushing man in terms of developing um appropriate mindset and mind frame uh, pushing this purpose forward so i ain't got no complaints bro life is life is real good life is beautiful as they say i saw you traveling a little bit you gonna put that out there well you know i have to get away from mm-hmm. time to time to, to, to clear my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do a little uh, jet setting from, from from point A to point B. How was but that experience? We ain't going to go into no details. We, like we, we ain't got to go into the details. How was it, though? I mean, you did put the book out there that you was on, and you was the book that you were cur- currently reading. And, you know, overall, good good time, good experience, good, good, good way to get uh, get away. Yeah, man, good to get away from your, your day-to-day environment and see some different stuff and be, just be in a different setting, man, and, you know, get amongst people in a um, in a different city, different town and see how they live. Uh, naturally, you get some inspiration from that. If you listen closely enough, you'll get some ideas and some thoughts. So, you know, with me being as culturally curious as I am, those trips are, are beneficial because it, it breaks up the monotony. And um, I'm able to just, you know, put, put put life on pause and and just really, you know, look within and, and tune out to the rest of the world and all that noise, uh, you know, like we talk about and just and just kind of be still for a minute and, and, and allow the thoughts and stuff to come to me. So I always try to get me a little break from time to time so that I'm able to to do that, to kind of get in that space. So kind of refreshing the soul, mm-hmm. the mind and the mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. I'm, exactly I'm on. Right. I'm actually exactly on right. a similar walk right now. Uh, I started my fast, so you know, at the start of each year, um, I typically do a 21 day fast with with one with the church I currently attend in in the DC mm-hmm. metro area. So we on this 21 day fast, and you know, this is something I've I've been doing for a while, but it's good to actually do it with a with another group of people because it kind of keeps you motivated and it. It's, it's a good way to connect with with your high being that you, um, mm-hmm. whatever you call your God, you know, is a good way to kind of get more spiritual, um, active, and really just refresh the soul and the mind. So, you know, they say it take twenty one days to to break a habit. So mm-hmm. for me, you know, I I normally pick 
pick items whenever I do fast that that I just like to show that I'm disciplined enough to 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 withstand and withhold uh for those 21 days. So uh yeah. we we going, you know, we got 21 we got we got several days to go, but we'll finish and we'll make it. Yeah, we'll make it. I'm on mine. I'm on mine too, man, and it just seems like during that period of time there's a certain degree of clarity. You know, when you fast from from some of those distractions, if you won't even go to the level of food, it just feels you just feel kind of purified and, and things just become from what I find it become more clear and make more sense. So I always get excited about this time of year, too, for that reason. Oh, so how long does y'all y'all fast? 21 about? days. Yeah, our church does 21 days um, as well. Um, so I started. Right now, it's a it's about like day ten for me right now. Oh, so you really deep into it? Yeah, I'm about day ten right now. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, you further along than me. So, um, yeah, so I'll be doing this for for another for for twenty one days, and then I'll be hopefully I'll be to have some moments, like you say, have some moments of clarity. And it's interesting because um, when I do my my personal fast, and when I do go through this fasting period, to your point. Um, it's just interesting how a lot of new thoughts come um, to me. Um, even on Sunday, you know, I had some interesting thoughts that I that we'll probably share on the future podcast. But it, but you're right; it's it's, it's clarity. It's um, it's even less stressful in a way, kind of. So it's just it's 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 good. It really is. It really is. All right. Well, so we, yeah. we got to get it. We got to get into this 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 talk today. We got a good uh, a good talk for you all, the free lunch podcast family out there. Um, but you know what time it is? <laughs> hey, what's up? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it that said somebody that was on the show was like, "You ain't gonna do it. You're not gonna do the." That was Trish. Do the Trish was like that. <laughs> yeah. Trish. Trish Shout out to Trish. Now. Shout out to what's Trish. Up, Trish? Yeah, she she kind of called me out on it, and then T, you know, T kind of <laughs> she she kind of made me feel some type of way. T, so, what's happening? Gone town in the build. <laughs> so so I got I got I I, I kind of this is a tough one actually. Oh, uh, here we go. They're pretty here tough. They're pretty tough. So I got I can do selection A, <laughs> selection B, or medley. Here we go. This is the new twist, man. Week so, after week, you come to the thing with two. Because yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a little difficult. It's a little difficult. Okay. So well, so man. I can do selection A, selection B, or both. What would the people like to hear today? <laughs> man, let's go with both of them. Because I, I, I always want to know what the options are. So you might as well just kill two birds with one stone. We can do that. We, I mean, uh, go ahead. Okay, we, I was just saying, I was just making sure if if you want to do that now, I don't want to. Do you don't put it out far. there. You don't put it out there now. All right, all right, then go yeah. with it. Then get it to him. We are family. I got all my people with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, sing. Hey. We are family. I got all my people with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, and sing. That, 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 that's election A. That's, that's A. That's A. That's A. That's A. That's Let me see if y'all can roll with. Let me see if y'all can roll with with the B side. You got to know. It. Wait, hold on. (coughs) You got to know it. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. Now you can't hold it. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. But you know that it's there. Yeah, here, there, and everywhere. I got to move. I'm going to... On a party ride, I got to groove. 
groove, groove, and from this music I just can't hide. What you think? What you think? That's the first time in history that Electric Slide has been sung a cappella. <laughs> that ain't never happened. I'm making history now. You're making history as we speak. That ain't never happened. Never happened. That somebody actually sing the words correctly without the music. Without, without the dancing. music. Trying to get the tune in my head. Man, that's tough. I told you, boy, that karaoke tough. Tough. So what we, so what we talking about today, man? So today, and let me ask you this before I even yes, knock sir. it. Do you see what I was trying to do? I see the common theme in that. I, we are family. Mm-hmm. And then to come back to the electric slide, a Negro classic for <laughs> for family reunions across the country. So there you go. Seems like we're going to be talking about something about unity or family or something like that. Uh, we're going to be talking about family. But but to be, but to be um, quite frank, we're going to be talking about um, generational curses. Oh, and and really, the the thought and the theme around generational curses really kind of came to me um, on a recent trip. Um, actually, it was during the holidays. You know, I like to travel home, and it's a concept and it's a thought that um, I've had for years, you know. Um, but now that we have a platform to actually discuss something of this nature, I think it would be good to put it out there in the universe and really discuss it and talk about and tackle this this particular concept, idea, what have you. Um, but just to give you some background, and what really stuck with me was on a recent trip during the holiday season, I kind of did the, the Four City Tour, um, you know, where I went through the whole Auburn, Selma, the Mobile to Birmingham tour. And during that during that tour, you know, whenever I do make it home and, and during the holidays, the family kind of gets together and we celebrate Christmas. And um, just looking at not only my immediate family, but also just my extended family and just sort of surveying because when you're not, you know, me, living living hundreds of hundreds of miles away um i'm not there every day so whenever i do go home it's 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 kind of it's, it's refreshing but it's also me getting to learn and getting to know people um new people that i've never met <laughs> right, right, uh, right that right. were that were probably born or you know maybe i didn't see them the previous trip i went home but you know, I just started looking at family members and just starting to see how there's maybe a common thing in different in different households and different families, where it be single single parents, um, whether it be a whether it's a drug issue um, that goes from 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 the mother to the daughter, or from the grand from the grandfather to the grandson to the from the grand father to the to the son to the to the grandson and really just looking over and just kind of doing some self-evaluation and some self-reflection and just like man um this is really a topic and a discussion that would be interesting on the podcast um and 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 finally not to not to be long-winded but finally just listening to the combat jack show episode with Daryl Strawberry where he kind of touched on his story and um, gave an example of how he um, his dad had pulled a, a gun on him and his family on um, on his family and then Daryl Strawberry to pretty much imitate that exact same gesture later and just kind of how ironic it would be that you would that that we as human beings and people would would potentially replicate um, curses that that happened um, that happened, you know, with our grandparents or with our or or if it's one generation away with your with your parents or what have you. So, you know, just really wanted to throw that out there and and really have some conversations around around this particular topic. And it's a heavy topic, though, you know, especially when we talk about the community that we are familiar with, the African-American community. 
we always are looking for like what is the root cause of like our problems and the and the ills that are affecting our people and you know a lot of times when you get into discussion with people about certain things and what's the problem what's the solution we always tend to get back to it the family structure it starts at home it starts with the parents um and so when you start looking at it from that standpoint then you also have to broaden that that spectrum and start looking at well how is what we're seeing a reflective of like you said what was happening down the line with that particular family's uh grand patriarchs and, and grandmothers and stuff like that. And how was their situation then? How did it impact them? And how has that particular period in time impacted the, the generations that have come behind? And, and what you'll see is you'll see a lot of commonality. Um, some of it may just be embedded in just pure DNA and science, like chemical balance and imbalance that's passed from generation to generation. Um, some of it may be like genetic disorders, genetic psychiatric disorders when people are, might not be behaving or might be acting, um, going against the grain, so to say, from a behavior standpoint. But then a lot of it is just environment because we are creatures of imitation. We like you usually do what we have seen others do. We take it in, we process it, and then even in a subconscious manner, we act in the same manner. So I think to start going down this road of community building and empowering each of the individuals that make up this community, we do have to take a serious look at generational impact and start breaking it down so that we can better understand where we come from and what's going on and in, in, in our history and, and all such as that. And I feel like that creates a better framework for us to move forward not only in terms of understanding ourselves individually, but also as a community when we have to try to understand each other. Um, but it, it is important to note that like this generational thing is real and the cycles that are created within families from gener generation to generation is a, is a, is a real thing. And, and you can, you see it day in and day out. Do you think that when, when discussing generational curses, do you believe that it's a well, it's a topic that's discussed amongst uh, black families, um, or or do we kind of ignore it, or are we just ignorant to this whole idea of a generational curse? I because feel, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, ahead. me no, personally, I was going to say that um, I, we don't have a lot of conversation around generational curses, and there are patterns that if you if you know your history and you know your, when I say history, your family history and you know your ancestry, you'll see that there's, there's patterns that can date back to however far you can probably go back to. Um, for some of us, that's, that's all the way to the Clotilda <laughs> and, and, and Henry McGregor. Huh? Uh huh. And I heard you. You heard me. And, and for others, yeah. and for others, it's one generation away. So, I think that, you know, do you believe that this is a topic that's, 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 that's generally discussed? I don't think we do <clears throat> the way that we should because of the, the fear of uncovering some of those negative aspects or negative characteristics that may have come from our great granddad and our granddad or even, you know, just our mother. Uh, because, you know, some of the stuff may not be, um, it may not be things that we can be proud of. Some of their acts and some of the situations that they were in may even bring some degree of embarrassment. So it'd be hard for you to even want to go down that road of investigating, like, you know, where does this come from? How did they, how did they act? What were they known for in their community? What were some of their behavioral patterns when they were here? So that fear of being embarrassed or, 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 or having to see, you know, somebody we, that we respect and look up to, but having to see them maybe in a negative light is a scary task. So I think that prevents us from really digging down deep and trying to see if there is some connection or if there is some realness to this term that we use of, of a generational curse. And then some people just, if you say the word curse, they just don't believe in curses and spells and all. They put that in the whole, you know, in the same category. But, you know, I just think that people are just afraid to uncover some of that 
some of that stuff that may not be <clears throat> as um as acceptable to, to 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 take in. You make a very interesting point. And that point is is it's this idea of not wanting to share the story, right? Your family mm-hmm. story. So you see or oh, I've experienced that really when it came to, you know, your grandparents being people of of um that you honored and and, and that you really um, loved and respected, but in a lot of in a lot of ways, there wasn't a lot of conversation around um, that auntie or that uncle or <laughs> or or that or that relative that was kind of a little throwed, you know, for lack of better words, mm-hmm. or there wasn't a lot of conversation around. Um, anything that they thought would bl- b- b- bring shame to the family, and I think I think it's important to have those conversations because I think that from having those conversations, you can uh, you can understand the root cause of maybe some of the strongholds or some of the challenges that that you're having as a as an individual. Live your truth so that others can't use it against you as a is a common theme or a common quote that you've heard myself and and BG say. So even from that perspective, I think it's important, regardless of the public shame you think is going to bring upon yourself or your family, to discuss that internally so that you can have a clear, concise understanding of what the issues were, who had the issues, and really understand um, really understand where you come from and how you're built. I get stuck on YouTube. I'm a junkie for it, and I just look at different stuff. A lot of you know biographies, autobiographies, people talking about their lives. And so when we when we talk about this particular issue uh, of generational uh, generational curses, you know. When you think about that, the kind of the, the, the elements that come to your mind would be things like drug abuse, domestic violence. Um, I would even say something like poverty and, and, and gang life. You know, some, some of, the, of the, the core issues that are having a negative impact on our society globally. Um, but if I was to take it personal, I would go to another step in terms of a generational curse as it relates to our community is the lack of progression or the lack of inspiration. I mean, Um, mediocrity, mediocrity and being, being mediocre is, is a, is, is a, is a germ within itself in a lot of ways, because mm -hmm. me personally, I mean, and to your point, I don't believe that we were created to be mediocre. No. I think that's contagious. I think it's a germ that a lot of us have accepted um, out of fear. And and because of that, I think that's another example of something that could be passed on from generation to generation. We did a show on religion um, that, that um, that'll drop in which we talked about how how religion was created from fear and you right. know when that gets installed in in a in a in a in a, in a family um foundation um that fear can be passed on from from generation to generation to your point um i agree a hundred percent yeah that was key you said the word fear but i was having a conversation um, with a relative, and you know we've been talking about it in, in lieu of the issues like the Michael Brown situation, the Eric Garner situation. There's been a lot of movement in the in the in the African American Black community as it relates to people unifying and us coming up with a strategy for how we can empower ourselves and kind of take our destiny into our own hands and not being in relying on the system and the yeah, the, the the justice system and, and, and all those entities. And so I was having this conversation. And so we, we kind of come to the conclusion that the, the real uh, or the surefire way to really 
staking our claim as, as African Americans is to gain um, economic empowerment, to get to a place to where we can take care of ourselves, we support our own businesses, we have businesses, and we can keep our money and our resources within the community. And so in order to do that, you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. You've got to have people that are willing to <clears throat> risk going the status quo route and going out on vision and on faith and establishing businesses. And we know that. We want to be empowered. We've got to have entrepreneurs. But a lot of times in our community, we'll talk down on that road to entrepreneurship because of the fear. It's going to, you might be in, in debt. You might get so far in debt is one thing that people will say when you start talking about, I want to start a business. You know, something else will come out. Well, people are not, not going to support you as a black man or a black woman. So the same people that are saying we need to be empowered, we need to have some economic strength in the next breath, we're talking against the, the steps that are needed to be taken to get to that point. And I feel like if you look in a lot of households in our community, nobody is really pushing entrepreneurship from the time you are five or six years old. Nobody's really encouraging you to own your own business or putting you in a position to where you can, you know, uh, follow somebody or go shadow somebody that's in business to get those skills and maybe get some information to help you along that road. That's not really a conversation that we have that's embedded in our households. What we get is you just need to go to school, get a job and work for somebody. That's our path. And that goes from generation to generation to generation. So for me, it's like asking the question of, how do we break that particular generational curse? Because I feel like a lot of these curses and things that we're talking about now that have affected many of the generations from a family's lifeline were based off of the decisions of the, the descendants that came before. It's a decision of how you're going to maneuver through life. And so I feel like we have to get to the point of breaking whatever generational curse that said before us. And the one that I see more profoundly is that one that I'm talking about is that fear of progress and moving forward because we want to stay in that safe lane that's been taught to us from generation to generation. In your opinion, do you think that generational curses are learned behavior or hereditary? Because of the way that, you know, we pass genes and the genetic <clears throat> makeup that we have and we share you know, to our offspring, I feel like there are some things that are just purely genetic. I think I feel like some of the psychiatric disorders that we see that do affect people's lives, some of them do have a genetic component. Um, but I would also like to believe that most of it is just based off of mindset and what what we're instructing each generation to do and how we're instructing people to function. I think it's two approaches, right? I think that there are tangible kind of generational curses that we kind of talked about. You kind of mentioned earlier with the domestic violence, the alcohol addiction, the, um, you know, the abuse, etc. I think that's one but bucket. You know, if we want to talk about generational curses, I think we can put those in one bucket that are kind of tangible. Um, we can address those through different different means um, that we can discuss here in a second. I think that other bucket that you're talking about, this idea or these um, these intangible, i.e., fear, um, uh, mediocrity, being mediocre, I think that's a separate bucket. And I think to answer your question regarding those type of curses or generational curses, which I would agree they are, because at the end of the day, I don't think not one human being on this earth was created to be mediocre. I think we all were created with a purpose. I think we all were created to excel at, for, at, at with our gifts, that gifts and talents that we've been given. And I think that 
once we tap into those and we marry that with our purpose, I think that we're supposed to elevate um, each other and mankind. So I do. I said that to say I do agree with your points. I think, the, and 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 secondly, with the entrepreneurial example that you provided, um, we can definitely have a debate on um, black businesses and entrepreneurship because there were some things that you said I kind of disagree with, but that's for another show. Uh, what I do agree with is um, when you discuss this path, right? Um, our our parents. Um, basically, and this is a conversation I've had since, since 2010, uh, with one of the listeners who actually listens to the show that can kind of echo what I'm about to say. Um, the, we were basically given a blueprint to do exactly what you said. That blueprint is, um, go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a good, get a good degree and go work. And I think that if we label that a generational curse, which I'm not sure if we're going to label that one 100 percent a generational curse. But if we because I think that that's just more of our parents wanting the best for us. Um, but let's for the sake of this discussion, let's say we label that as a generational curse. Then I think that the way to stop that type of curse is essentially what we're doing. I think it's number one, becoming conscious. Well, yeah, becoming conscious of, of that particular mindset and that particular path that was basically instilled in us and really just saying, okay, I get it. I understand what the intent was from our parents want us to basically have a better lifestyle than they had and be able to provide for ourselves, um, not be dependent upon um, anyone to make any payments, uh, but go get a good job, get a good degree, and make a lot of money. Um, I think the way you stop that is essentially to say, okay, we, our generation, you and I, have to basically say that path may may have been good for our parents, but for us, you know, we've become a little bit more conscious of a different route that that one should take, and that route should be essentially following your heart and identifying what your purpose and your calling is and then educating yourself around that particular purpose and calling. And I think that's really the new blueprint and we just really have to um, basically put that into motion once we have kids and once we're really ready to uh, once we're with the people we're mentoring and really just change the conversation. And it's important that we do that because if if not, the next generation is going to be just as, as stagnant as we are. And we definitely, when we move into that role of being parents or, or, or being guardians, we cannot be in the place of double talking. We can't we can't be talking about empower yourself, but then also in the same breath, encouraging people to go into that same system that is only going to, this is only going to create a ceiling for them. We got to allow them to, of course, get the foundation and everything that they will need to compete. But at the same time, we have to encourage them to be able to go out and investigate or explore a dream and not shoot it down and start t- covering the next generation with that fear. Because at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's the fear of failure. It's the fear of not being comfortable, but we know that all of the, the fear of change, the fear of not fear knowing the, the fear of the unknown. And so we have to, you know, just for what we're talking about in this particular lane, um, it's important for us that are now aware of, of what's going on and where we need to be. We have to make sure that we erase that part from our, you know, the for the generations that come after us in our particular family tree um and that's going to be important it's going to be a it's going to be a paradigm shift from everything that we've seen and observed up to this point um but it's going to be very necessary um in terms of preserving the community because in my eyes 
there are a lot of other communities that are preaching that from the time a child gets on this planet. I agree. I there agree. are a lot of there are a lot of other communities that are built up around there. There is no other way other than to seek, uh, you know, seek that economic independence within your community. And they preach entrepreneurship and kids grow up in a situation to where their parents own stuff. Um, and that becomes a way of life, and they, they pattern their lives after that generational example. So I feel like for the African American community, that has to become a priority for us as well, in terms of entrepreneurship, economic independence, and generational wealth. How do you have that conversation with with the generation before you? Because um, in a lot of ways. You know, and this is actually a challenge I have, right? So a challenge I have is is I've, um, you know, I went to college, blah, 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 learned a little bit. But I've had the privilege of, of living in different areas, um, surrounding myself with diverse groups of people, and really just becoming more awakened and more conscious and essentially developing, having the ability to develop my own thoughts um, develop my own truth, my own understanding, and really try to be a visionary um, for conversations like um, what we're having today. Um, but how do you have that conversation with the older generation when it comes off as though, number one, they may not hear what you're saying, and number two, they may not agree with what you're saying? Because... Like I said, this is something that I that I feel like I have a challenge with uh, whenever I go back to Mobile or whenever I do go back to Alabama. I feel like there are times where uh, some, of the, some of the things I've learned just from the mere having the privilege of, of relocating and living in different cities and learning different things and being able to, to see um, the generational wealth and being able to see um, spend time with different ethnicities and learning how how the upbringing how they're bringing up their children, et cetera. Um, and that's in a lot of ways can be contradictory to what you were taught. So you have to really renew your mind and be open enough to number one accept what you're seeing. Um, I'd rather see a sermon in here one any day. So accept what you see, and then have that conversation with those individuals that may not see what you're saying, your loved ones to try to say, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. Um, this is, this is the, the direction I really believe we should go in, but them really not hearing it. Yeah. And so that's, I think that's a tough conversation to have. If you come from the standpoint of trying to convince them of changing their perspective on it, uh, it starts with us though. So when you do, you know, when I have those conversations, with someone from the generation before me, I, you know, I'm really just trying to get some insight on their thought process. And often the, that thought process is reflective of the time in which they grew up in, you know, the, the way of life from that, from that time period that they were maybe kids and young adults and all that. So that, those time periods form a lot of their perspective. And then, of course, just what they were told by their parents and their grandparents um, at that, it, you know, as they were coming up. And so, of course, that's going to be different. Their experiences and their perspective is going to be different. But for me, I just want to kind of gain some insight into where it comes from and, and why it exists. Why are things the way that they are? And then by doing that, then you can put your own spin on it for how you're going to change it. So, of course, my parents' education, right? Go to school. They set that example. Um, but one of the things that they did not do a lot of is they didn't do a lot of traveling from place to place. Don't really try a lot of the things. They're not as out of the box with their living as I am. But I had to make a decision. And some of that decision was sparked by me just being in different environments and seeing people doing different stuff. So now I feel like when I have my kids, I'm going to make it a priority to make sure that they are exposed to a lot of different things, a lot of different cuisines, a lot of different, um, you know, 
ethnicities and people and places and all those type of things and not really talk down against it because I want them to be culturally curious. I want them to always be in the in the mind frame of asking the questions of like why, how, when, and, and those type of things. I want them to be inquisitive. Um, so, you know, and just taking the action at this stage in the game. No, I'm not going to be able to change their minds about it, but I can use that information from them and make a decision on how I'm going to change the trajectory of the next generation that comes after me. One thing that I'm really big on is is really following your heart's desires. Um, follow your heart because that's where your treasure lies. And really um, big on, on fulfilling your purpose and your calling. And one area where I think that there needs to be a, a, a shift within the urban community and which is a lot of out of fear is that of the educational system. And I think that um, basically the, uh, the blueprint you provided that, that you and I both followed is it's an archaic blueprint. And I think that for me, um, when I have children, uh, I think my responsibility is going to be to really give them, uh, help them to identify what their heart desires. And that's through exposure of as much as possible. That way, when if I can help them to understand what they absolutely love to do, at that point, um, they can then go into the educational piece surrounding that particular desire to help them become the best at that that they can be, be that they can be, become and again it doesn't have to be playing a sport it could be working in trying to figure out how to work in that industry or what have you but i think that we have to really renew our mind and really try to understand what it is that's being passed from us, I mean, to us from our parents or our grandparents and really understand, first off, you have to, number one, understand who you are. And that, to me, is really understanding that you were created to be, to elevate and inspire mankind and really to take um, mankind to a next, to another level. And I think that if you operate out, out of a spirit of fear, or if you operate out of a spirit of mediocrity, then I think that that's something that may have been it may have been passed on to you, and that you really need to say no. Um, this isn't who I am, and that I was actually created to be to, to be a visionary, to be a leader, to be a pioneer, to to be someone um, of excellence. And, and the people, listeners might be looking for us to, you know, to shed light on some of those other curses, you know, like the drug abuse and the domestic violence and things like that. And, you know, we really don't touch on those because me personally, I don't have any real, you know, connection, personal connection. And I don't want to talk about anything that I can't really share from a real sincere and authentic place. But what I do know is that I have observed some people that have come from situations like that. They come from a, a history of familial alcoholism or a line of family members that have been incarcerated. And it seems like, you know, in the midst of all that, there are one or two family members that come from that generational tree that are able to reverse the curse, for lack of a better term, and they're able to go in a different direction. And I think, of course, that there's probably some spiritual covering that, you know, that helps those individuals see the light, so to say. But a lot of it is what you just talked about. It's just a renewal of the mind. Those individuals, at some point, something happens or either they encounter somebody and they just make a conscientious decision that they're going to not follow in that pattern. They take some type of action. And they go in a total different direction. And so they offset all of those things that had happened to family members around them and before them. Um, but I think that speaks to us in a larger scale is that there are probably a lot of things that we come from that we are in the position to, to, to change the end result. If we just make 
that decision to to reach higher and 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 go to go towards those things that the the maker has set out for us all the time knowing that it's a it's a process it's a growth process and some of the things that you come from are there for a reason they're there for a reason to give you the motivation to go forward and to do better for yourself and to do better for the offspring that's to follow you so if i could say anything it would just be to encourage people to yeah look look and see what your what your family is founded upon some of it is it is, is going to be great some of it might even be to a point that will it will anger you and embarrass you but look at it be courageous enough to take a look and and break it down and analyze it and use all that information to to set a path for you that will put you in a better situation for now and and for the future yeah i think you you raise a good point we didn't touch a lot on those tangible curses um the domestic violence the drugs and like you said they may not be something that that's directly related to us i do see the single parent where there's a generation of and i right. do see that and that's something that just it, it, that i think we just need to acknowledge um that 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 may be a pattern within within my family or within your family and just try to make a conscious effort to be aware, um, be aware of the curse. Um, once you are aware of the curse, then really just trying to trying to trying to understand and see how you can how you can basically break that curse. Another point I was going to make um, before we before we kind of shut down was um, mental health. You know, you don't see a lot of blacks, African Americans. Um, Going to mental health doctor, you know, that's something that's that's almost shame shamed on, and that's something that's almost looked upon as being being weird or being like it's a, like it's an issue basically to go see a therapist or to go see a counselor and to, and to really talk out some of the some of the the the, the demons or or the the spirits that you have in you, and really just to. Go talk to someone that's professional where that you can address some of the concerns that you may have or some of the issues you may have had growing up so that you can really become aware of those curse generational curses and and try to basically be be the person that kind of stops where the buck stops you know so and with, that, and with that mental health like it or not we all have some degree of uh mental disorder whether it be depression anxiety, even to the level of bipolar schizophrenia. Um, so we all have are dealing with something in that in that grouping in one form or, or another. And so here we come around again to knowing what's going on, knowing what the history is and taking action for it. And you summed it up very well is it is to be open to going to people that are put in position that are experts and in helping you talk through and work through whatever situations that that you're dealing with. And I, you know, I deal in my profession, deal with people that are dealing with psychiatric disorders. And it's beneficial to go to an expert that practices and giving you tools on a day to day basis that will help you deal with those psychological issues or the stress and the strain that's mentally being that you're having that they're in place for that. And so that'd be something that if you're not directly dealing with it, if you have friends, family members, relatives, coworkers, whatever, to encourage that, not to make people feel ashamed about it or things like that, but to encourage that they speak to someone that can help them um, better cope or deal with the situations that they're dealing with. So um, like we always say, live your truth so others can't use it against you. That's exactly don't be right. don't be ashamed of of who you are, where you come from. Just know where you're going and where you're headed, and that'll and that'll resolve and solve anything else. So, good conversation, dude. Yeah, man, we're trying to break these generational curses. We we're trying to set uh, a new standard and, and and lay new groundwork for 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 this new South movement. And I, you know, I, I'm just I'm just 
convinced that we've got to start at ground zero going to those conversations that are not had on a, on a regular basis amongst our people and just get that conversation started and making people think about it and, uh, you know, and, and see how far, see how far we can push this thing. Free lunch podcast is home. It's home of the new South movement. And yeah, yeah. to your point, um, I think we do have to start as, as at, at ground zero. And in a lot of ways, I think it's just putting the conversation in the universe. The more you just put the conversation out there, whether we're talking about generational curses, whether we're talking about is God internal or external, whether we're talking about the power circle, whether we're talking about Lilia Truth, it's it's conversations that 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 you get very little of, if any, and it really just needs to be put out in the in in the universe and and really just to change the the climate and the culture and really just to change the 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 thought process and provide a refreshing new new voice and a refreshing new thoughts on on discussions that are that are in some ways not even being discussed exactly right so i like it man i I appreciate this opportunity appreciate everybody listening to us checking us out on a week-to-week basis it really is a blessing to to go into the Go on the website and go into iTunes and see you people listening to it and, and, and taking advantage of this free lunch podcast. I really do. We really do appreciate that as a collective. We do. We do. We do. We appreciate it. And I'm really telling you guys in 2015, some some bigger and better things are going to happen with, with the free lunch podcast duo, South the South's hottest podcast duo. And home of the New South movement. I think that some really big things are going to be happening this year. Be on the lookout for a few of those in the near future. And um, you're going to let people know how they can reach us? Yeah, so check us out, freelunchpodcast.com for your, for more podcasts and blogs. Also, shoot us a line. You, you just, just give us an idea how you feel about this conversation as well as any of the previous ones. You can hit us up on Twitter, Free Lunch Pod C, and on Instagram, Free Lunch Podcast. We are family. I got all my people with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, and sing. We are family. I got all my people with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, and sing. And we out of here. Free Lunch Podcast, home of the South's hottest podcast duo. We out of here.